Welcome back to the lecture series of Building Materials and Construction. Today we'll begin with the part 3 of Stone Masonry. So guys, we have covered the following topics in the previous two lectures. That's the first from the general definition of stone masonry to its types and finally with the difference between stone masonry and brick masonry. So now let's move on to the next topic. So today we will learn in detail two topics. One, stone finishes and two, stone jointing types. So before getting into the first topic, stone finishes, let's discuss a related topic and it's the dressing of stones. As you know, the surface of stones obtained from quarry are rough. The blocks are irregular in shape and non-uniform in size as you see in the image. Hence, the dressing is essential. So, the dressing of stones is sometimes done at the quarry itself because freshly quarried stones are soft due to the moisture contained by them. So, the moisture is called quarry sap. The local workers are more experienced in the art of dressing of that particular type of stone. Also, if the stones are dressed at the quarry site itself, the transportation costs are reduced because of the reduction in the weight due to dressing. So now let's check into the definition of dressing of stones. It says that the stones after being quarried are to be cut into suitable sizes and with suitable surface. So this process is known as the dressing of the stone. And we can find three objectives for the process. The first one is to make the transport from quarry easy and economical. That is to minimize the transportation cost and second to get the desired appearance for stonework. And third, that is to suit to the requirements of stone masonry. As far as uh, stone masonry is concerned, it has certain requirements like uh, the stones should have a certain size and certain shape and certain finish. So these are the three objectives for the process. There is another point to be noted, that's the dressing of stones is sometimes done at the quarry itself because freshly quarried stones are soft due to the presence of moisture contained by them. So the moisture is called quarry sap. So that's all about dressing of stones. Now take a look at the tools used for stone dressing. We have the hammers, chisels and certain other tools like the hand saw used for dressing of stones. There are different kinds of hammers like the spell hammer, scrabbling hammer, mesh hammer etc. And different types of chisels like bosters, punch point and certain other tools like the drag, hand saw, cross cut saw etc. So each type of tool is used to create each type of stone finishes. Now take a look at the types of stone finishes. In fact we have 14 types of stone finishes and we will discuss each type in detail. We have the quarry faced finish, we have the scrabbling finish, we have the hammer dress, the axe fixed, punch finish, bolstered finish, tool finish, forward finish, combed, vermiculated, reticulated, plain rub and polish. Now let's start with the first time. It's called the quarry phased finish of stones. So in this type the exposed phase of stone is not dressed but is kept as such. As you find in the image the exposed phase is not dressed but except that the Projections exceeding 80 mm are removed by light hammering. So the projections on the stone surface exceeding 80 mm are removed by light hammering. And these type of stones are sometimes directly available from quarrying and these are also called 
sulfate stones or rock face stones so that's all about quarry faced finish for stones now the next type is called scrabbling finish of stones so this is type of rough dressing in which the irregular projections are removed by scrabbling hammer so this is what we call as a scrabbling hammer here the irregular projections on stone surface are removed using scrabbling hammer and the resultant rough surface finish is called as scrabbling finish so that's all about scrabbling finish now let's check the next type of stone finishes it's called the hammer dress finish so these types of stones are well suitable for masonry work in this type of finish the stone blocks are made roughly square or rectangular by means of a baller's hammer so here in the image you can find baller's hammer so next the exposed face is roughly shaped by means of a mash hammer so here mash hammer is used to roughly shape the exposed face then the bed and end joints are dressed back some 75 to 100 millimeters from the face so here the bed and end joints the joints are just backed or recessed to some 75 to 100 millimeters from the surface so the hammer dress finish is adopted to stones which does not contain sharp edges or corners and the exposed face as i mentioned is roughly shaped by mash hammer so that's all about hammer dress finish for stones now let's move on to the next type it's called the axe finish of stones so in this type of finishing axe is used to get the required surface of hard stones like granite so thus the finish is called as the axe finish so it's a pretty simple the type so now let's move on to the next type it's called punched finish for stones so this is in fact another form of rough dressing usually used for lower portions of the buildings and this type is otherwise known as broached or stacked finish here the exposed face of stone is dressed with the help of a punch here you can find the punch this is called punch this tool so the exposed face of stone is dressed with the help of a punch thus making depressions or punch holes on at some regular distance say about uh, 25 millimeters apart here in the image you can find those impressions made using punch so as i mentioned punch finish is obtained by punching the stone using a machine which depresses the surface of stones and creates hollows and ridges on it so that's about punch finish for stones so next let's move on to the next type of stone finish it's called the busted finish and otherwise known as the drooled finish so here in this type the dressing is done with the help of a booster and a hammer here it forms a series of 38 to 50 millimeter wide bands bands of more or less parallel tool marks which cover the whole surface so this type of finish contains intermittent parallel lines which are horizontal vertical or inclined so this finish is obtained by a tool called boster which have an edge width of about 60 millimeter so this is called as a boster here in the image you can find boster so that's all about boster or drew finish so this is the next type of stone finish which is called the tool finish for stones this is in fact a classic finish which consists of parallel continuous marks 
So this type of dressing is done as a further step to boasting. So after having boasted the surface, a series of continuous and parallel fine chisel lines are formed with the help of a batting or a broad tool. Here in the image you can find broad tool. So this is a common dressing for ashlar work and the lines are deeper and continuous. The lines may be either horizontal, vertical or inclined. So here, after having, let me repeat, after having boasted the surface, a series of continuous and parallel fine chisel lines made with the broad tool are formed on the surface. So that's all about tool finish for stones. So next, now look at the next type of stone finish. It's called the furrowed finish for stones. So this type of finish is applied to the fillets or flat bands of cornice, string courses, doors, windows, architraves, etc. So in this type, a margin of about 20 millimeter width is sunk on all the edges of the stones and the central portion is made to project about 15 millimeters. So here, a margin is left around the perimeter of the stone of a width of 20 millimeter and the central portion is made to project about 15 millimeters. Next, 10 millimeter screws are made on the projected portion using a gauge. Though here, this is what we call a gauge. So, this method is used to make the coins prominent or the cornerstones. So this method is usually used for coins. So next type of stone finishing is called com comb finish of stones. The next type of stone finish is called combed finish. The finish is used only in soft stones. The surface of stone is first brought to the required level by means of a dummy and a soft stone chisel. Here in the image you can find dummy. It's a tool. So drags made of steel plates and of different grades are then dragged backward and forward in different directions until the tool marks are eliminated. And finally, a comb finish is obtained. So this is otherwise also called as a drag finish. And that's about comb finish. And now let's move on to the next type, which is called the reticulated finish. So reticulated finish is a special type of finish in which a margin of 20 millimeter wide is marked on the sides of the surface and an irregular sinking type finish is made in the middle area. For that sinks also a margin of 10 mm wide with 5 mm depth is provided. Finally, dots are marked in the sunk surface using a pointing tool. And that's about reticulated finish. So next we have the other type of stone finish called the vermiculated finish. Here the marginal draft are sunk about 10 mm below the surface. So this is similar to the reticulated finish except that the sinking in this case is more curved and is like worm eaten appearance. So that's about vermiculated finish and next we have the other type called plain finish. So in this type of finish the surface of stone is made very smooth using saw or chisel so it's pretty simple and that's all about it and next we have the other type of finish called the rubbed finish so this type of finish is obtained by rubbing a piece of stone on the leveled surface the rubbing can also be done with the help of machine here, water and sand 
may be used to accelerate the rubbing process. And it's about rub finish for stones. Next, we have polished finish. So this type is used in marbles, granite, etc. These are polished either manually or with the help of machines. A glossy surface is obtained as a result. And that's all about polished finish. So that's all about the different types of stone finishes. So guys, till now we have discussed different types of stone finishes and now let's recap what has been discussed so far. Uh, regarding the quarry faced masonry, the exposed face of stone is not dressed but is kept as such as you see in the image and case of a scrabbling finish, the irregular projections are removed by a scrabbling hammer. Whereas the hammer dress finish is concerned, the stone box are made roughly square or rectangular by means of a water's hammer. In case of axe finish, the dressing is done with the help of axe. In case of punched, broach or stuck finish, the exposed face of stone is dressed with the help of a punch, thus making depressions or punch holes on at some regular distance as you see in the image. In case of bolster finish, the dressing is done with the help of a bolster and a hammer forming a series of wide bands of more or less parallel to marks. In case of a toed finish, a series of continuous and parallel fine chisel lines are formed with the help of a batting or a broad tool. In case of furrowed finish, a margin of about 20 mm width is sunk on all the edges of stones and the central portion is made to project about 15 millimeters. In case of comb finish, steel plates or drags are moved backward and forward in different directions on the surface of a stone until a comb finish is obtained. In case of vermiculated finish, Sinkings are worked to a depth to form winding snake-like ridges. So, reticulated finish is similar to vermiculated except that the ridges or vein are less winding. They are linked up to form polygonal or irregular shaped reticules. In case of plain finish, the surface is made approximately smooth with a saw or chisel. Whereas in case of rub finish, the finish is obtained by rubbing a piece of stone on a level surface. The last one is polished finish. These are polished either manually or with the help of machines. So that's all about the types of stone finishes. Now let's move on to the next topic and it's called the stone joints. The next topic is stone joints. So students, as you know, there are numerous types of stone joints as in the case of wooden joints. So the following are the common types of joints provided in stone masonry to secure the stones firmly with each other. So first we have the bud joint or square joint, then we have the rebated joint or lap joint, then we have the tent or groove joint or joggle joint, then we have the bed joint or table joint, then we have the cramp joint, then we have the plug joint, next is the dowel joint, and then we have the rusticated joint, and finally we have the saddle joint. So now let's look into detail each type of joint. First we have the bed joint. So in this case, two stones are placed adjacent to each other stone so this type is used for archwork, copying on gables, stone laid on slopes, etc. So in case of bud joint, it's the most commonly used joint in stone masonry. Here the dressed edges of two adjacent stones are placed side by side. Next we have the lapped or rebated joint. So a lap joint is provided where the movement of stone pieces is to be prevented. 
in this case rebates are provided to prevent the movement of the stone as you find in the image in fact rebate is a recess or a groove cut into the edge of a piece of material usually wood so this type of joint is known as rebated joint so the length of rebate should not should not be less than 70 mm the joint is mostly used in archwork copying on gables etc the third type of joint is tangled and grooved joint as you find in the image in this type of joints a projection of one stone fits in the corresponding groove of the stone adjacent so this type of joint also prevents the sliding of stones as a result then we have table joint the fourth type the table joint is otherwise called as bed joint so the joint is used to prevent lateral movement of stones such as as in sea walls where the lateral pressure is heavy so table joint is suitable where the lateral pressure is high and need to prevent as in the case of sea walls so in this case to prevent the lateral pressure a joggle joggle means a notch or a tooth in a joint surface so a joggle is formed on the upper surface of the bed stone and a corresponding recess is formed on the bottom surface of the stone which is lying above the bed stone as you find in the figure so the recess of the upper stone is fastened on the joggle of the lower stone joggle or tooth so the depth of the projection should be about 4 cm and the width of the projection should be 1/3 of the breadth of the stone so that's about table joint and next we have the cram joint so this joint uses metal cramp instead of devils so in this type the holes are made on adjacent stones which would be as a dovetail shape in this case to connect these stones cramps are used instead of dowels in fact in fact cramps are pieces of non corrosive metal like gun metal copper etc and the ends are turned down about a depth of 4 to 5 cm so the length of cramps vary from 200 mm to 300 mm and the width and thickness may vary from 2.5 cm to 5 cm and 0.5 cm to 1 cm respectively so after placing the cramp in proper position the rest of the spaces are grouted with roulette or cement mortar so the cramp is provided to prevent the joint to open out due to slippage of one of the stones so that's about cram joint next we have plug joint in fact plug joint is same as a cram joint but in this type it consists of making plug holes of dovetail shape in the sides of adjacent stones so after placing the adjacent stones a common space for plug is formed which is filled with molten lead sometimes rich cement grout is used in the place of molten lead and this joint is mostly used for copying cornices etc compared to cram joint here we won't use a cram or a metal next we have double joint so in this type a hole is made into each stone then dowels which are small pieces of hard stone slate gun metal bronze brass are used for connecting these stones and secured with cement as you find in the image usually the thickness of dowels are 2.5 cm and they are 
around 10 centimeter to 15 centimeters long in fact this joints prevents unwanted displacement of stones and when dowel joint is provided for columns then it's named as bed plug and next we have the eighth type of joint it's called as a rusticated joint in fact this type of joint is mostly used in planes or masonry in lower stories of buildings and the joint may be of various types such as channel joint, V joint, mole joint and V and channel joint. So the joint is used in stones whose edges are sunk below the general level as I mentioned for plinth, quine, outer walls of lower stories etc. Such a joint gives massive appearance to the structure. The last and final type of joint is the saddle joint and this type of joint is provided to protect the joints of cornice and such other slope surface. So with the help of this arrangement a water moving on the slope is diverted from the joint and this type of joint is otherwise called as water joint. Another point to be noted is that the saddle is beveled back beveled backwards from the front edge as you find in the image. So that's all about stone joints and thank you for today and we'll continue in the next lecture.